What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and as most of you all already know by now, Gabby Petito's family filed a lawsuit against Brian Laundrie's parents. And now, as a result of that, it looks like there is a possibility that Brian Laundrie's parents will be forced to hand over their cell phones for evidence. Now, before I go any further in this story, I want you to keep that in mind that this is a possibility. This isn't something that is going forward yet. This is just something that is being discussed because in other cases that are somewhat similar to this, the people were forced to hand over their cell phones and a lawyer has now spoken out, not Gabby Petito's lawyer, but a lawyer has spoken out and says that he believes this will be the first step of this lawsuit is to get the laundries to hand over their cell phones so they can get whatever evidence they can from these cell phones that would indicate what type of conversations they had with Brian Laundrie in the days after Gabby Petito's death. Now let's go ahead and hop right into this article to get a better idea of what's going on here and then I'll give you my thoughts about it. Brian Laundrie's parents may be forced to hand over their phones, says lawyer who reveals what may happen to them next. Brian Laundrie's parents may be forced to hand over their cell phones in a $100,000 lawsuit filed by Gabby Petito's family after being accused of knowing their son killed the vlogger. Petito's dad, Joseph, and mom, Nicole Smith, filed a civil lawsuit against Chris and Roberta Laundrie last week in Sarasota County, Florida, months after their daughter was strangled to death. Laundrie's parents, who have slammed the lawsuit as baseless, helped locate their son's body after he disappeared and have never been arrested or charged with a crime. But their attorney also claimed that they had no obligation to speak to law enforcement or any third party, third party including the Petito family, during the investigation. Now, pause right there. I'm sorry, but I have to react to that. Because I fully believe that if I knew something about a murder and investigators pulled me out of my house right now and took me down to the police precinct and asked me questions and I sat there and just straight up said that I knew nothing about it and then it came out later that I did, I feel like I would be charged with something. <laughs> I'm sorry. We could You could try to break down the schematics of it all and the legalities of it all, but in reality... Like I've stated before, people are sitting in jail for way less than what the Laundries did. So I don't understand why they weren't charged with something. I'm sure there is something in the book that you could have thrown at the Laundries. But let's go ahead and go forward with the article. In an exclusive interview, criminal defense attorney Josh Ritter, who was a Los Angeles County prosecutor for nearly, nearly a decade with a 90% conviction rate, has spoken about the new civil case. If I were representing the Petitos, my first request for Laundry's parents would be their cell phones, he said. We all walk around with an astounding amount of information, an astounding amount of information in our pockets, text messages, emails, phone calls, voicemails, location history, purchase history, you name it. The cell phones alone could contain everything that the Petitos need to prevail in this case, we will have to see, we will have to wait to see what evidence is uncovered during litigation to truly tell if the lawsuit is a strong one or not. But if evidence does exist, and you can imagine it might in the form of text messages or emails showing that Laundrie's parents were aware of the murder and helped their son conceal evidence or evade capture, then the lawsuit would be on very sound footing. Ritter said the lawsuit comes as no shock as the Batitos continue to mourn the death of their 22-year-old daughter who died during a camping trip with their fiancé, Brian. This lawsuit comes as no surprise once you realize the incredible pain and loss experienced by the Batito family, he said. And basically, that's all the information he gives about the lawsuit. He does go forward and say a few other things that really don't really pertain to what I'm talking about right here. So, he believes... The first step in this process will be that they're going to request the laundry's phone and the laundries will have to hand over their cell phones and maybe various other electronics devices 
over to the court and they will search through these phones to get, I guess, text message records, phone logs, you name it, to try to pinpoint when exactly Brian Laundrie told his parents about what he did to Gabby and whatever, you know, different correspondence they had back and forth. Now, I feel like this is something that should have been in the FBI report. I don't feel like the family should be having to request for the laundry cell phone. Now, I think they should have already been given the information about whatever the laundry said back and forth between, you know, them and Brian Laundry. I would imagine, I would hope that the people investigating this case already got the laundry cell phones, already know exactly what was said between Brian Laundry and his parents, already know the exact dates, already know the text messages, the phone calls, you name it. That is their job. That is something that they should have had laid out already. It was not part of their final investigative report. And honestly, I would imagine that was part of the investigation, but judging how shitty this investigation was, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure what to believe anymore. I don't even know if these people even went down the avenue and even cared about arresting the laundries. Maybe it was left out of the report because they didn't want to arrest the laundries. I don't know. I can't pinpoint that exactly, but I don't understand why this is something that the Petitos are now having to request in court when I feel like it's something that should have been documented. Like if Brian Laundry told his parents on a specific date and there was conversations between the two back and forth, that should be part of the investigation because that would also pinpoint, you know, when Brian Laundry said that he killed Gabby. Because you got to understand that in the FBI report, they basically say that they know that Brian killed Gabby because he admitted to it in his journal. They say nothing about a text message or any phone calls, you know, back and forth that would have, you know, where there would have been some type of admission from Brian to his parents. Now, I don't think Brian would have been stupid enough to text his parents that he did this, but who knows? Everyone was really idiotic in this case, you know? At the end of the day, we all thought Brian, you know, formed this elaborate escape when reality, he was just right down the street from his house in a ditch or in a puddle, you know, whatever you want to freaking call it. So I don't know, but I just feel like that's something the Batito shouldn't really have to be requesting. I think that's information should have already been giving to them, but I'm happy that they will, or there is a possibility that they will be getting the laundry's phones. Of course, I'm not sure the Petitos wouldn't get it themselves, but I'm happy that they will have access to this information or a possibility that they will have access to this information. And I'm interested in what will come out of it. You know, what would they be able to prove? Because I would believe that there wouldn't have been too much said over text messages, but maybe just the timing of these messages, the timing of these phone calls will help them prove their point and prove their argument. But like I said, I also believe that the Petitos already have other information that we don't know about yet. You have to remember this lawyer that's talking about this, he doesn't know exactly what the Petitos know. So the Petitos may already have a lot of information from about these phone calls and these text messages, and we just don't know it yet. That is also a possibility. Let's not rule that out that the Petitos may not even need to request these phones because maybe they have information that we don't have. Maybe that's why they went ahead and went forward with this lawsuit. So all in all, we're going to find out. Rest easy knowing that even if the Petitos don't have this information yet, there is a possibility that they will be able to access this information. And that will be good for this case. I cannot wait to see how this plays out in court. They have requested for it to go before a jury, which means the, la the laundries are going to have to show up. There isn't going to be any, oh, the laundries don't have to come to court. None of that BS. The laundries are going to have to show up and they're going to have to say something for the first time. For the first time. I'm not sure how closely you all have been following this case, but if you've been following it really closely, we haven't heard the laundries say anything yet. And that's crazy, right? The most we've heard from the laundries is Chris Laundry, Brian Laundry's father, mumble a little bit while going to his mailbox or while cutting his grass. They haven't said anything. I just want to hear what their voices sound like. I want to attach voices to these faces that I've been looking at and studying carefully for months on end. I want to hear what they have to say about this. 
and I'm sure you all do too. But let me know what your thoughts about this are down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And as always, find some time out of your day to go watch a movie.